So a few weeks ago, when Pastor Isaac asked me, uh, Pastor Jeff, can you take the first service? So I say, uh, let me pray about it before I give you a yes. So I went back, I prayed, uh, and after that, uh, the, I think the next two or three days uh, at the SPO meeting, I told Pastor Isaac, yeah, okay, I'll take the first service. So lo and behold, when I said yes to him, uh, the Lord uh, instilled in my heart this message, come to Jesus and rest. And it is based on my all-time favorite verse, which is Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. I think I did share from this pulpit before why it is my favorite verse, Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, because eleven twenty-eight is my birthday, yeah. So, uh, so it's very easy to remember, yeah. Uh, so, so when I decided that I want to preach on this topic, come to Jesus and rest, suddenly there was unrest in my family. Yeah, so three weeks ago, uh, my little Naomi granddaughter, uh, she hurt her left thumb. Yeah, so it was a cut and she was bleeding profusely uh, and my wife was panicking uh, and my daughter, together with my wife, sent her to the clinic uh, and they didn't do a good job bandaging it. So after that, my son sent her to another pediatrician. So they said that her finger is so small, not much flesh and not much skin, it is very hard to stitch. So they didn't stitch it, but thank God it healed by its own. So we thought that the worst was over. Then a few days after that, she got dengue fever. At one year plus, she had dengue fever and I was like, Lord, what is happening? You asked me to preach on come to Jesus and rest and I am facing unrest here, you know. So actually, when I'm preaching this sermon, I'm preaching to myself, yeah. Uh, so after that, uh, her fever was gone, dengue fever subsided. But then the grandfather became sick. I was having fever and for the first time in many, many years, I took medical leave. I think Pastor Chu signed my medical leave. He would know that. Actually, I don't go on medical leave that often. So, I was losing my voice. I was having a bad sore throat. But thank the Lord, I'm here and I'm ready to preach. Amen? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, praise the Lord. So, the next slide. If you remember, three weeks ago, uh, Pastor Chu, the next slide, please. Yeah. Pastor Chu... Uh, sort of ended his sermon by these three unshakable convictions. God is good, God is in control, God cares, He knows what He is doing. So uh, after hearing these three unshakable convictions, is our faith really secure? Or are we still shaken when bad things happen to us, when there's a crisis in the family, do we still feel shaken in our faith or do we hold on to these three unshakable convictions? And in Luke chapter 21, the next slide, uh, in verse 26, it says, Man's hearts filling them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So this is the last days. In fact, man's hearts will fill them because of fear and for looking at the things that are coming on earth. So my dear friends, I do not know what situation you are in right now or what fears that you may have in your heart, but let me rest assured uh, and let me uh, give you this assurance that we can come to Jesus and rest. Amen. So let's read with me from Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. Are you ready? Uh, up on the balcony, those at the back, to the front, left and right. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. So, 
I would approach these three verses uh, using the acronym R-E-S-T. So the first one is respond to Jesus' invitation, expect only good from Jesus, submit to his leading, trust Jesus for everything. So R-E-S-T. So the first point, respond to Jesus' invitation. So this invitation is come to me. Yeah? So come to me, the invitation is come to me, come to Jesus. The invited is all you and the condition is who labour and are heavy laden. So to whom should we come to? It is me. Uh, not me, uh, but Jesus. Uh. Yeah? So it is to me, uh, Jesus, and it is amazing how many of us we run to gurus, we run to professionals, we run to experts in whatever field for opinions rather than come to Jesus when we face a problem. Yeah? So Jesus is not saying, come to my religion or come to church, although I sincerely hope and pray that when you come to SIBKL, you will meet Jesus, you will encounter Him. Amen? So, the call by Jesus is not to come to Christianity per se, but it is to come to Him, Jesus, as your Saviour, as your Lord. So, come embracing the Lord, come trusting Him, giving your whole self wholly unto Jesus. So it is a powerful, active act on our part to come to Jesus. So the invited, who are the invited? All you and the condition who labour and are heavy laden. So repeat after me, all you. Say to your neighbour, all you. So you are invited and this invitation is for all of us. All you, all me, all of us are invited to come to Jesus. So some of us, we feel that uh, I have no need to cut out Jesus. A little, little thing or so, come to Jesus for what, you know? I can settle it on my own. No need to disturb Jesus. How many of you, sometimes you feel that way? that some things I can settle on my own. Yeah, so I see a few hands up there. But for Jesus, you can come to Him for everything. Amen? So it, it doesn't mean that, oh, only big problems, I come to Jesus. You can come to Jesus any time of the day and for everything. So some of us, we may feel that, hey, I'm not worthy to come to Jesus. There's still a lot of sin in my life. I feel so dirty, I feel so unworthy. Let me assure you, none of us here, in and of ourselves, we are worthy to come before God, but it is through the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ that we can all come into His holy presence. Amen? So don't look down on yourself, don't feel ashamed, don't feel unworthy. Come to Jesus and this invitation is for all of us. So why do we need to come? Because of our condition. The condition is who labour and are heavy laden. So back in the days of Jesus, the Pharisees in Jesus' time, every time said, you must do this, you must do that, you must keep this law, you must keep this, you must follow the Ten Commandments, you must do, 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 do. Sounds familiar? Yeah? So even in this modern time, sad to say, there is this heavy load that's being placed on us where even our bosses are... Uh, how many of you, you love KPIs? I think none of us love KPIs, right? So every time when it is assessment day, you know, your boss asks you to go to the room, you know, say, do you do this? Do you do that? Do you do that? So it's like a heavy burden, heavy load on you. But in Jesus' days, this heavy load that Jesus was talking about was from the Pharisees who load a lot of things to the Christians back then. Uh, they are not yet Christians, sorry. To those people who uh, believe 
uh, in Judaism, and they load all these requirements of the law on them, and, and it became a heavy burden to them. So in Matthew 23 verse 4, it says, For they bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves, i.e. the Pharisees, will not move them with one of their fingers. So they only say, you do, you do, you do, but they themselves, they go around with their long flowing ropes, uh, acting so holy and righteous, you know, before them. So this is the heavy burden that Jesus was talking about. It was a yoke of slavery to the law of Moses that the Pharisees had placed on the people back then. Yeah, so uh, the next picture, if this is you, and I hope none of us is like this guy about to drown in a sea of problems and troubles. So this guy is saying, my problems are more than I can bear. I can't stand it anymore. I have failed so many times. So if this is you this evening, the next slide, respond to Jesus' invitation. Come to Jesus. Amen? So this is Jesus' invitation to you. Respond to Him. Come to Jesus. His hands are ever ready, outstretched to you to welcome you into His presence. Amen? So the next point is, when you come to Jesus, expect only good from Jesus because the promise says, I will give you rest. So how many of you, you love to rest? I see quite a number of hands. But I've known of people who tell me, oh yeah, sleep, uh, why need to sleep? Sleep is such a waste of time. Have you come across such people before? Yeah. So I have come across such people and they say that, hey, sleep, a uh, waste of time. Uh, you know, I need four hours sleep to cope already. You know? So... But all of us, we need to rest before the Lord. So, what is your definition of rest? So, for some guys watching Manchester United playing, uh, it's rest, yeah? So, for the ladies, shopping is rest, yeah? So, ask Pastor Lee Chu. She loves to shop. Yeah, so some people, you know, their definition of rest differs one from another. So, what is rest? So, let's look at what is uh, the definition of rest from Webster's Dictionary, it says to lie dead. So that's why when you're dead, they say rest in peace. Yeah? So, so I hope none of us is resting in peace right now. Yeah, so uh, to cease from action or motion, refrain from labour or exertion, to be free from anxiety or disturbance. So in Matthew 11, 28, 29, Jesus said that when you come to Him, He will give you rest and He will give you rest for your souls. So in Genesis 2 verse 2, it says, On the seventh day, God ended His work which He had done and He rested on the seventh day from all His work which He had done. So the rest that Jesus promises and when we say God rested on the seventh day, it simply means that He rested because all that He ever set out to do has been accomplished and that's why He rested. Yeah? It has been fulfilled. Uh, the work of creation has been fulfilled and God is contented. So that is what God meant by rest. So fulfillment and contentment equals to rest. So Jesus fulfilled the full requirements of the law. Jesus paid for all our sins and God the Father is contented with Jesus' sacrifice. So that is the definition of rest when you are fulfilled and when you have contentment in your heart. Then you can rest. So rest does not equal to just go and tido, eh? Yeah, so this is rest, yeah? So Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 29, Jesus said that He will give you rest, rest in your conscience. Jesus paid it all, fulfilled on the cross, 
We give Jesus the full weight of all our sin and Jesus also promises rest for your souls, rest in our minds, in our emotions, absolute contentment in Him. He gives us His complete ability to obey God. Amen? So this is the divine exchange on the cross of Calvary. We give Jesus the full weight of our sins and He gives us the complete ability to obey God. Yeah? Because none of us, in and of ourselves, we can truly obey God 100%. But Jesus did it all for us. Amen? So this is the rest that Jesus wants to give to each one of us. So when we come to Jesus, expect only good from Jesus. Psalm 23 verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And in the, this version, TLB, it says, Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. So when you come to Jesus, expect only good from Jesus. So do you remember uh, the Jesus saying that when earthly fathers, when your children come and ask you for fish, would you give him a scorpion? Uh, how much more God the Father will give you good gifts when you come and ask him uh, uh, even in confidence that you will receive only good from Jesus. But then you tell me, but sometimes bad things happen to me also. Or it's not only good. So is that a good thing from Jesus? If Jesus say, give me rest, why bad things happen to me? So which brings me to my next verse in Romans 8.28. Uh, before that, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Yeah, so be assured that when you claim God's promises, it is always yes and in Christ Jesus, amen, to the glory of God our Father. So in Jeremiah 29, 11, His plans are always good. So expect only good from Jesus. And in, uh, in Romans 8, 28, it says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. So just now, I was uh, asking this question, Pastor, bad things happen to me, so how can you say, expect only good from Jesus? But in this verse, it says that we know that in all things, whether it is good or bad, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. So many a times when we look at things on the surface, it may seem to be a bad thing. So let me just quote you one of the many examples even in my life. Many, many years ago when I was still working in the corporate world in a bank, uh, I have this very uh, nasty boss uh, I'm not uh, a male chauvinist pig, but she's a lady boss. La. I don't know whether lady boss are more the rogue or what. I, I don't want to be, uh, you know, a sexist, you know, but uh, I have this lady boss who was very the rogue. So every time uh, when I go off uh, early because I need to go for Bible study, I need to go for prayer meeting, she will come and say, Jeffrey, you finish your work? I say, yes. Everybody stay back. Why you don't stay back? I said, I finished my work. You finish your work, so you need to stay back. You know? So long and short of it, no, she, she doesn't like me. And then uh, the bank, we went through what we call a productivity study. Uh, and this productivity study was to actually chop people, you know, because the bank was growing very fat and they want to retrench people, they want to uh, uh, downsize, you know. So, wow, this lady boss of mine said, wow, mm, you know, 
This is my opportunity to kick Jeffrey out of my department, you know. So lo and behold, she put my name as one of the candidates to be under this productivity team. But lo and behold, God turned it around because I learned so much from the consultants and this productivity team we report direct to the CEO. Uh, and after that, I got my promotion and I got my fastest promotion. Uh, after that, because they changed all the job grades and lo and behold, I, I jumped two grades, you know. So, so even in a bad situation like that, God works for the good of those who place their trust in Him. Amen? Yeah, so it doesn't mean that it's bad means it's bad. You know, God can turn it around for good. Yeah, so, uh, so in this verse, church, who is working here? Who is working here? God is working, right? God works for the good. So when God works, who rests? We rest. So we are rested in His promises, we are secure in His promises, and we stand firm uh, by what He said in His Word. So we have established that we need to respond to Jesus' invitation, and that when we accept His invitation, we can only expect good from Jesus. Why is it that some of us, we still feel restless? Yeah? So the bad news is that we are still in a fallen world and we still have disbelief and we carry a sin conscience. So sin is the essence of restlessness. When we run after the things that the world has to offer, it will increase our restlessness. So have you ever wondered why so many of us, we are addicted to so many things that the world has to offer to us. Yeah, it's because we have a very restless spirit. So in the, in the book of Ecclesiastes, the richest and the wisest man that ever lived, King Solomon, uh, has this to say. And in the beginning of Ecclesiastes, he say, Vanity of vanities, said the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. So what profit has a man from all his labor in which he toils under the sun? His conclusion at the end of the book is, in Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, fear God and keep His commandments, for this is man's all. How many of you, you own this book written by Pastor Chiu, is life worth living on the book of Ecclesiastes? Uh, not many of you are uh, out of print already. Lah. Pastor Chiu, maybe you need to print uh, next year. Yeah? So uh, it is a wonderful uh, book. Yeah? So if you ever get a copy or borrow from someone who has it, read about the book of Ecclesiastes. So because of our vain pursuits and sin in our lives, it has eliminated the rest that we can have in Jesus. So why as Christians do we still struggle to rest? It is because we do not submit to Jesus' leading and combine it with faith. And this brings me to the next point, submit to His leading. So in Matthew 11 verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. So in this picture that you see on the screen of these two oxen being yoked to each other, usually the younger ox will be yoked to a more experienced older ox. So when the older ox say, turn right, you know, so the younger one must follow. If the younger ox don't want to turn, then the neck will be very painful because they share a yoke together. So when the older ox wants to drink, the younger one also got to follow and drink, although the younger ox is not thirsty. So in the same way, when we take Jesus' yoke upon us and we learn from Him, we have to follow the rhythm that Jesus set for us. 
don't go ahead of him and don't be a slow poke and take your own sweet time, walk slowly, and Jesus is already ahead of you already. Yeah? So, walk in rhythm together with our Lord Jesus. And when you take his yoke upon him, submit to his leading, the next slide, take and learn, be yoked with Jesus. So, take, this is a deeper experience. Firstly, we need to come uh, and next we are to take and learn. So when we take his yoke and learn, we find rest, the next slide, and we find deeper rest. Well, suddenly become Luke already. Okay, uh, the next slide, deeper rest equals surrender and obedience. So when we take his yoke upon ourselves, we have peace with God, Romans 5 verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I think there's a technical error behind there. Never mind. Uh, so, uh, follow me. So, Romans 5 verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. And this deeper rest is when we have taken the yoke of Jesus upon ourselves, we enter into a deeper rest of surrender and obedience. So, number one, we have peace with God. And number two, we have peace of God. Philippians 4, uh, reading from verse 6, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. So my friend, be yoked with Christ, take and learn from Him, submit to His leading and Jesus say, learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So what does it mean that my yoke is easy? It doesn't mean that when we take the yoke of Jesus upon ourselves, that we can relax, no need to do anything. So look at the verse carefully. You still need to take a yoke and you still need to bear a burden. But here, Jesus says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So what does easy here means? Easy means that Jesus has got the right yoke for you. It is made specially for you and Jesus knows how much that you can bear. And my burden is like, because why? Jesus has done everything that is ever needed. He is the fulfillment of all the law. So learn from me, learn from Jesus is a process and know that when God calls you to something, He will lead you, He will equip you. And in Galatians 5 verse 1, it says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And in the NLT it says, So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. So how many of you, you love to keep the Ten Commandments and you have kept the Ten Commandments. Ah, thank you that none of you raise your hand. Because none of us can ever keep the Ten Commandments. You break one law, you have broken all the laws. So this yoke that Jesus placed on us is because He has fulfilled everything in the law. He is the uh, fulfillment of all the law and that's why his yoke is easy and his burden is light. But then you may say, I, uh, Pastor, easy for you to say only, ma, you don't know my problems. My problem uh, only I have. No, no other people have on this problem. 
Do you hear this from people? Have people talked to you that way before? That we don't understand their problem and the problem that they have, only they have, you know. No other people have that problem. So, yes, as a pastor, I do not know your problem, but who knows? Jesus knows. Jesus knows your every problem. And in 1 Corinthians 10, it says in verse 13, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So there's a note here that the Greek for temptation and tempted can also mean testing or tested. So when you tell me, Pastor, you do not know my problem, only I have this problem, this verse says that no testing, no problem, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He won't give you such a big problem, such a big burden that you cannot bear. But when you go through that problem, He's there with you, journeying with you, carrying the load together with you. Amen? So let God uh, lead you and may you be rested in Him even as you take His yoke upon you. So service one, what issues do you face? Yeah, so a lot of the youngsters are not around, so now I don't see that many youngsters uh, in this service one. But on a usual uh, Saturday evening, we see a lot of young adults, uh, young people here. So the Lord is asking you, what are you going through right now? Yeah, so in 1 Peter 5 uh, verse 6, it says, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Let me drink water first. Huh? Okay, so, service one. A lot of you, you have approached me, you have approached some of the pastors, and even those who are close to me and my wife, they have come to us and say, oh yeah, until today, uh, I got no girlfriend, uh, no boyfriend. Uh, you know? What is happening? You know? So, let me tell you my story. Want to hear or not? <laughs> so, many, many years ago, uh, I was in this church in Jalan Imbi, and the closest school uh, that is... Uh, nearest to this school, uh, to this church, is Bukit Bintang Girls School. Yeah? And the population of this church also, majority are also from BBGS. Until I know how to sing their song. BBGS, we pledge to thee. <laughs> you know, I even know their song. Goodness gracious. How many BBGS girls are there here? Any BBGS? Oh, there's one here. Okay. So all throughout my young adult youth life, I was pursuing BBJS girls. <laughs> but their standard was so high. They want everyone uh, to be like Pastor Chu, you know, so spiritual, can preach, you know, uh, can read the Bible from front to back, quote verses, you know. So where got so many people like that one, you know? Uh, so... After many years of pursuing BBGS girls, I said, Ay, uh, la. I think I need to sing Cliff Richard's song, Bachelor Boy, already. Uh, you know? yeah, so, can I get married already? You know? So, lo and behold, one day, <coughs> when I was uh, taking my car from the car park, uh, then I saw my colleague with a beautiful girl. Then I saw her standing there. Yeah. <laughs> So it was my wife. La, huh? uh, so in my heart, I was saying, wow, this colleague of mine uh, was well, going out with this pretty girl. Uh, and it was just a desire in my heart. Wow, how I wish uh, my girlfriend is like that. Uh, you know? So lo and behold, that was the first meeting. 
Then after that, uh, a few weeks later, I went for lunch. Then uh, at the lunch place, when the lift door opened, out she came with my colleague again. Wow, I say, what? Second meeting, huh? Wow. So what is the Lord trying to tell me? Huh? <laughs> so I didn't do anything about it. It was not until many weeks down the road, suddenly I received a phone call. And that phone call was from my wife because she was looking through a photo album and she saw my face in the photo album which belongs to her brother. So she asked her brother, hey, who's this guy? And then the brother said, it's Jeffrey. Yeah, I knew him actually from, actually we were both from the same college doing A-levels. Uh, she knows me, but I do not know her because I was in the limelight, la, so to say, I was in the singing contest in the college. So, from a distance, you know, she was already looking at me already. Yeah? Uh, so, she called me. Uh, so, we dated and the rest was history. Yeah? Uh, so, so that, is, that is what happened to my life. So, in the same way, if you're looking for a boyfriend, you're looking for a girlfriend, don't sweat. Yeah? Just let the Lord lead you to the right person. Yeah? And uh, I hope and pray that next year, I will talk to Pastor Isaac. We will hold a single night for you all. Okay? Yeah? So we will maybe hold a dating successfully for you as well. Okay? All right? Service one? All right. Okay, so relax, yeah? Uh, and, and whatever you do, uh, please, uh, even when we counsel people, I've heard of cases where the boy become, you know, try to be more spiritual. Then he tells this uh, girl, you know, when I was reading the Bible this morning and I was struggling in my heart whether I should ask you to be my girlfriend, and I come to 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. Perfect love casts out all fear. So, I think I should ask you to be my girlfriend. Then the girl will tell the guy, I also read the Bible this morning. And I was also struggling whether I should call off this friendship. And I read John 13, 27 and it says, What you are about to do, do quickly. <laughs> so, my friends... Cannot pakai already. Huh? <laughs> so let God lead you to the right one. Amen? Okay, so come to Jesus and rest. Okay, so let's review the points. Uh, we have touched on respond to Jesus' invitation. Expect only good from Jesus. Submit to His leading. And we come to this last point uh, in trust Jesus for everything. So if you read in Matthew 11, the earlier verses, and also later in chapter 12, that despite seeing firsthand uh, Jesus' miraculous works uh, and clearly demonstrating who Jesus was, the people still refused to come to Jesus and believe in Him. So when Jesus said, come to me, He meant believe in who I claim to be and therefore trust that I'm able to do everything for you. So Jesus does not want our souls resting on the how or the when, but He wants us to rest in the surety that He will keep His promises the best way and at the best time. Amen? So in Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. So trust in the Lord. And in Psalm 91, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. So what does it mean to trust in my God? 
So we trust God by saying, next slide, He is my fortress, uh, He is my refuge and my fortress. And when we say that, so if you look at this verse uh, properly, in verse 2, it says, I will say of the Lord, and if you look at the highlighted at the bottom, my God, in Him I will trust. There is a convergence, this green portion, He is my refuge and my fortress. And because we believe and we say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, He is my God, in Him I will trust. So whenever you face any difficulties, Chinese people, uh, we are very fond of seeing this, uh, say la, you know, say la, everything is so say la, you know. Please don't say that, yeah? Whenever you face a situation, quote scripture, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. So whatever situation that you are in, always proclaim scripture, claim God's promises and enter His rest uh, with faith, uh, together with faith. So, <clears throat> so if your relationship is failing, instead of saying the D word, D equals divorce, and I hope none of us have ever said that word before, don't ever say that. Instead of saying that, say, the Lord will restore my marriage and renew it like wine. Amen? Yeah, so the posture that we need is to trust in Jesus and to enter His rest. Uh, and, the, and the posture that we need to enter His rest is faith. In Hebrews 4, 1, it says, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering His rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. And in Hebrews 4, uh, verse 11, So let us do our best to enter that rest, but if we disobey God as the people of Israel did, we will fall. So my dear friends, when we take Jesus' yoke and when we learn from Him, this isn't a call to be lazy, fold our arms, uh, let Jesus do all the work, you know. He asked me to rest. Ma. So that is not what Jesus is asking us to do. It is not that we do not need to do anything and that Jesus takes care of everything for us. No, not at all. There is still a yoke to bear and there is still a burden to carry. Yet with and in Jesus, they are easy and light. Jesus' yoke is easy not because it makes lighter demands but because it represents entering into a discipleship, a relationship with Him. And if your yoke is hard and your burden is heavy, then we can say that truly, this is not Jesus' yoke for you. Yeah? So Jesus said it plainly, my yoke is easy and my burden is like. And in John 15, it says, abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So belief, trust and abide is all the work God requires of each one of us. So faith, i.e. believing and abiding, is resting on the hopeful promises of God that is the yoke that Jesus calls us to put on. So my friends, believe, abide, and trust Jesus, and you will find rest for your souls. Amen? So in closing, let's review these four points. When we come to Jesus and rest, 
respond to Jesus' invitation, expect only good from Jesus, submit to His leading, trust Jesus for everything. For God's promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus to the glory of God the Father. I'm going to sing a song entitled Promises. Despite my bad throat, I believe this song will minister to all of us. Promises. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenants and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness to me From the rising sun to the setting same I will praise your name Great is your faithfulness to me From age to age, though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. Oh, your history can prove there's nothing you can do, you're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come. To pass, great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting sun, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation. He'll never let me down. Oh, I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation. He'll never let me down. Oh, I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground. My hope and firm foundation you never let me down you never let me down Great is your faithfulness to me Great is your faithfulness Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Let us pray. 
Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can come to you and rest. We thank you for your word, Lord, that you have said that we can come to you and we will truly find rest. For your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So even this evening, if you have come with a heavy load that you're carrying, I want to open the altar and I want to pray for three categories of people. I did not share, I, I forgot to share a testimony that even during the MCO, uh, when we were having Zoom meeting with the cells, there was this couple who did IVF for many, many times and they have failed to conceive. But yet, even through the Zoom meeting, when I prophesy over them, when I pray for them, uh, there was one Zoom meeting which I attended. They ran up to me and they were so happy and said, Pastor, no, you say that by this time next year, there was back then during the MCO, I would have a child. And now I'm pregnant with child. So whatever your desires are, the Lord can answer your prayers. So I want to open the altar for three categories of people. If you are believing the Lord to have a child, you want to be a parent, uh, please come to the front and we'll pray for you. The second category of people is, if you are really very heavy laden, there are many worries, many troubles that you're going through. There's a heaviness in your heart and you just want to come to Jesus and release it to Him. Come to the front and the pastors and the leaders will pray for you. And the third category, the last category, specifically for Service One, if you are looking for a life partner and you have failed many times, come forward and we'll pray for you. That's what as ministry continues up front, I'm going to release the rest of us. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the good Lord turn His countenance to all of us and grant us His shalom peace. Amen. Uh, please leave quietly uh, even as uh, the altar is still open uh, and the pastors and leaders are still ministering to people. Please leave quietly. Thank you.